Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL water tutorial and this week we're going to be adding the Fresnel effect. So the Fresnel effect describes how the reflectivity of the water changes depending on the viewing angle, so water appears more transparent when looked at from above, but more reflective when looked at from a low angle like this. A simple Fresnel effect is actually pretty easy to calculate, so here we've got a water surface with the surface normal pointing upwards, and we need to calculate how reflective the surface should be depending on the camera's position. As I just showed, when the camera views the water from above, the water should appear more transparent, and when viewed from a low angle, it should appear more reflective. If I add in the vector pointing from the water to the camera, you can see that the water should appear more transparent when these two vectors are pointing in the same direction, and more reflective when the vectors are pointing in different directions. So, the more these vectors are pointing in the same direction, the more transparent the water should be. And if you remember from the lighting tutorials, we can take the dot product of two vectors to find out how much they're pointing in the same direction. The dot product returns 1 when two unit vectors are pointing in the exact same direction, and it returns 0 when they're perpendicular to each other. So in this case, the dot product of the water's normal and the vector pointing to the camera represents how transparent the water should be. And I can actually show you this effect in real life here because I've got a bowl of water, and if we have a look at it from above, you can see that the water is very transparent. You can't see the reflection of my hand or anything. But if we have a look at this from a lower angle, you can see that the water's surface becomes very reflective. So let's get into the code now, and the first thing that we need to do in the water vertex shader is to create a new uniform variable that can take in the camera's position, because we need the camera position to be able to calculate the vector pointing from the water to the camera. So now in the water shader class we need to do the usual stuff, and we need to get the location of that new uniform variable, so let's do that and make sure to spell camera position correctly here. Then down in the load view matrix method we are going to actually load up the camera's position to that uniform variable which we can do by calling the load vector method. So now we can go back into the water vertex shader and here we're going to output the 3D vector which is pointing from the vertex to the camera. And to calculate that we need to know the world position of the vertex, and we can get that by multiplying the model matrix with the vertex position which we've done here, so we can copy that up here, and then we can just put in the world position down here so that we don't do that calculation twice. And now we can calculate the two camera vector, which is simply going to be the camera's position minus the vertex's position. Let's not forget that the world position is a 4D vector, so we need to make it 3D by taking just the X, Y and Z components. Now we can go to the fragment shader, the water fragment shader, and this of course needs to take in that 3D vector pointing to the camera, which will have been interpolated all over the quad by now. Uh, and the first thing that we need to do is to normalize it, because the dot product needs the vectors to be unit vectors. So we're going to normalize that two camera vector, and then we can do that dot product calculation to find out how transparent the water should be. So we take the dot product of the vector pointing to the camera, and the water's surface normal, which uh, we're going to assume is pointing straight upwards for now, so 0, 1, 0. So now if you remember down here we used to mix the reflection and refraction colors together, and we just mix them uh, half and half, but now we can use that refractive factor to choose how transparent, how much of the refraction texture we see, and as you can see, we now see more of the refraction texture when we look down at the water, and we see more of the reflection texture when we look at it from a low angle. We can also add another line here to change how reflective the water is, and we can do that by raising the refractive factor to the power of a number, and the higher this number, the more reflective the water is, so I've chosen a value of 10 here which makes the water very reflective and you can see that it's only transparent when you really look down straight from above. And in the same way we can make the water less reflective if we make that a smaller value like 0.5 and now you can see that the water is a lot less reflective than it was before. 
So that is it for this week. Sorry that it was a bit of a quick one, but I'm actually preparing to move flats next week. So with all the packing and all the Kickstarter preparations, I didn't really have much time this week for the tutorial, unfortunately. Next time though, we're going to be doing lighting with normal maps, and then I think there'll be just one more water tutorial after that. Don't forget to check out yesterday's devlog video about the new looting system. A link to that is on the screen now. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.